One is called Uller, son of Sif, stepson of Thor. He is so excellent a bowman and so swift on snowshoes that none may contend with him. He is also fair of aspect and has the accomplishments of a warrior. It is well to call on him in single combats. Idalar Kalde, the place where Uller, a hall for himself, hath set. How should Uller be paraphrased? By calling him son of Sif, stepson of Thor, god of the snowshoe, god of the bow, hunting god, god of the shield. Weapons and armor should be paraphrased in figures of battle. The shield is also called Ship of Uller. On ancient shields, it was customary to paint the circle, which was called the ring, and shields are called in metaphors of that ring. Ash of Uller, as here, the snow gusts of Uller's ash ship grimly o'er our prince shoot with fullness where are tossing the fearsome covered spike spars. Gudrun spake, the oaths oft time sworn and of old made firm by the sun in the south, by Sigtir's mountain, by the horse of the rest bed and the ring of Ool. Gold did she scatter, the swan white one, and rings of red gold to the followers gave she, the fate she let grow, and the shining wealth go, nor spared she the treasure of the temple itself. There were three brothers, sons of a king of the Finns. One was called Slogfith, another Eigel, the third Volan. They went on snowshoes and hunted wild beasts. They came into Ulfdalir, and there they built themselves a house. There was a lake there, which is called Ulfjar. Early one morning, they found on the shores of the lake three women who were spinning flax. Near them were their swan garments, for they were Valkyries. The brothers each married one of the sisters. Swan white second, swan feathers she wore, and her arms the third of the sisters threw next round Volan's neck, so white. They remained together for eight winters. During the ninth winter, while the brothers were away hunting, the sisters flew away to find battles and came back no more. Voland home from his hunting came from a weary way, the weather-wise bowman. Slogfith and Eigel, the hall found empty. Out and in went they, everywhere, seeking. Roland stayed, hoping for his wife to return. Red gold he fashioned with fairest gems, and rings he strung on ropes of bast. So for his wife he waited long, if the fair one home might come to him. On the bearskin he rested and counted the rings, the master of elves, but one he missed, that Lothfer's daughter, his wife, had it, he thought, and the all-wise maid had come once more. In fact, the ring had been stolen. 
Voland fell asleep. When he awoke, he was bound. King Nithoth addressed Voland. Nithoth marveled at Voland's metal craft. He took the missing ring and gave it to his own daughter, Bothvild. Nithoth cruelly wounded and imprisoned Voland, then sent the masterful metalsmith to make great works for him. Voland plotted vengeance. He tricked Nithoth's two sons and secretly killed them both. Then Nithoth's daughter came to Voland. She praised the ring that was given to her, but lamented that it had broken. She asked Voland to repair it. Voland tricked her also and told her he would fix it. Then he forced himself upon her. Nithoth pleaded with Voland to know, what kind of fate did my sons meet? Voland said that he would tell him, but first made him swear on many things, including a shield's edge, that he will not harm my lover, even if she bears my child in your own halls. Nithoth agreed. Voland then told Nithoth that he killed his sons and fashioned their skulls into ornamental drinking cups and that his daughter was pregnant. Thus, his vengeance was wrought. After this, Voland flew away. In skaldic metaphoric tradition, Outlined in Skald Skarpamal, gods and goddesses may be paraphrased thus, by calling them by the name of another, and naming them in terms of their possessions, or their works, or their kindred. In the literary passages in the Eddas, Ullur is directly associated with hunting, archery, and snowshoes. In Volandark Vita, Voland is associated with hunting, archery, and snowshoes. Olur is also associated with shields. In this tradition, the ring is a kenning for shield. In the Lay of Atli, Guthrun evokes an oath on the ring of Ullur. In Volandark Vita, Voland evokes an oath on the rim of a shield. Voland is identified as a son of King Finni, a king of the Finns. According to Bayok, Finnmark the borderland of the Finns is modern Lapland. The people known as the Finns to the Norse were the ancestors of the modern Sami, and they had a reputation for magic and witchcraft. The name Finn is often used synonymously with sorcerer. A recent genetic study presented by Lemendis in 2018 adds support to Biox hypothesis that Finnic and Sami people share common cultural roots. The study showed that the genetic makeup of Northern Europe was shaped by migrations from Siberia that began at least 3,500 years ago. The Siberian ancestry was subsequently admixed into many modern populations in the region, particularly into populations speaking Uralic languages today. Additionally, the study shows that the ancestors of modern Sami people inhabited a larger territory during the Iron Age. Volan's story is rooted in this historical backdrop of formative cultural periods in Iron Age Scandinavia and Western Siberia. Sheffer described the Lapland people he observed as good archers and hunters, and they slide upon the snow in broad wooden shoes. Voland is implicitly a bear hunter. After returning from a hunt, he sits on a bearskin roasts bear meat, and counts rings on a rope of fiber. Historical accounts of bear hunting rites among Sami people vividly document how rings were added to loops during complex ceremonies that followed the hunt. Fjellstrom's 1755 account records, a switch was twisted into a ring and attached to the slain bear's lower jaw, and the belt of the principal slayer was tied to it, marking him out as the bear's master. This ring would be taken home and preserved by the housewife 
until after the ceremonial meal when it would have a brass ring along with the bear's tail attached to it by the women and children. It was subsequently buried, but the brass ring was removed and hung on the drum used for bear hunting divination as it brought luck. Lastidius's Fragments of Lapish Mythology, recorded in the early 1840s, describes a similar account. The wife of the best bear hunter, who has had the above-mentioned birch tree loop wrapped up in a piece of cloth, now takes it out. All the women and children present put a brass ring or a chain on it. After eating what there was to eat, and after sucking off all the grease stuck to the bear's tail fur, they tie the tail onto the same branch loop, which is now decorated with brass rings. This they hand over to the bear hunters, who preserve it together with all the bear bones. Early historical accounts identify the principal deity of the Sami as the thunder god Tiramis. Sheffer's 1674 account identifies Tiramis by the name of the Norse god, Thor. Tiramis was accompanied by the forest deity Storionkar. According to Sheffer, of these two gods, whereof one half the dominion over men, the other over beasts. Sheffer identified as many as three hunting gods, one of whom, Hysa, was associated with the hunting of bears. Though useful, Sheffer's account offers an overly narrow view of Sami culture. Among the Uralic language speakers of Scandinavia, known as the Sami people, there are complex cultural variations, including localized variations in language. Principal deities tend to have similar attributes, but are frequently identified by different names. Ritualistic language and euphemisms associated with bear hunting are especially complex. Today, many deities are known only from folklore traditions. One of these is the hunting god Lieb Olmai, the Alder Man, who is said to sometimes take the form of a bear. In other Siberian cultural traditions, the bear is commonly identified as the son or daughter of a male sky or thunder deity and a female forest deity. The motif recurs in the Finnish national epic, the Kalevala. In this story, the forest deity Maliki ascended to the sky world and rocked the bear to life. Honey Pa was born in Ether, in the regions of the Moonland. Through the Ether walked a maiden, fair Maliki, woodland hostess. Tapio's most cunning daughter laid the bundle in her basket, basket made from bark of birchwood. There she rocked the thing of magic, rocked to life the tender baby. The same motif occurs in Kantai mythos. Lines in a ceremonial bear song recorded by Wigget in 2011 identified the bear's father as the sky deity, Big Torum. Hollowell briefly mentioned an unspecified Ostiac cultural story that identified Numi Torum as a sky god transformed into a great hunter and as the father of the bear. The bear song identifies the bear's mother as the forest woman. The forest woman, your mother has made for you shoes that will not slip on mud or ice. Across a breadth of Siberian mythic traditions, though richly diverse, the bear is closely related to a principal sky or thunder deity and to a forest deity. If Ullur has a direct parallel in Sami or Finnic mythic traditions, the parallel is obscured. Nevertheless, Thor's relationship with his stepson, Ullur, is vaguely comparable to that of Tyrmis and Storion Kar, whom Sheffer identifies as Tyrmis's lieutenant or viceroy. Adding to obscurity, in the Kalevala and in the story of Voland, metalsmithing is strongly associated with bear hunting. The Kalevala identifies Ilmarinen as the magical smith associated with metals in the bear hunt. Vanamoinen, ancient minstrel, to his brother spake as follows, O thou blacksmith, Ilmarinen, forge a spear from magic metals, forge a lancet triple pointed, forge the handle out of copper, that I may destroy great Otso, the bear. Like Ilmarinen, 
Volan is a master metalsmith. Ilmarinen is not the hunter, but gifts the hunter with the magical items necessary for a successful hunt. Although Ullr may be evoked to ensure a successful hunt, there are no literary attestations that connect him to metalsmithing. An association between Ullr and metals is alluded to by his association with rings, particularly in the Lay of Atli, in which Guthrun swears on the Ring of Ullr and later scatters rings of red gold, but an association with metalsmithing is speculative at best. Ullr is further distinguished from Siberian bear hunting traditions by his strong association with round shields. Round shields and the swearing of oaths on rings are both distinctive of Germanic cultural traditions. Trial by single combat is also characteristic of Norse social structure. However, Hollowell observed that ritual single combat between men and bears is common in Siberian hunting traditions. Drawing from accounts of Ostiak people, dated as early as 1706, he deduced that Numitorum may send a bear to punish a man for unjust behavior. Conversely, a man may be sent to punish a bear. Thus, according to Hollowell, in this worldview, both men and bears, in relation to each other, become instruments of supernatural justice. In the Lay of Atli, Guthrun is described as swan white and is associated with red gold rings. Similarly, Volan's wife is described as swan white and is identified as a Valkyrie. The narrative alludes that she is actually also a swan. In skaldic tradition, the swan evokes the swans of the Well of Erd, the Well of the Three Norns, one of whom is a Valkyrie. Valkyries are highly distinctive of Norse culture and storytelling tradition. This raises the question if Volan's marriage to a Valkyrie can be interpreted as a marriage of cultural traditions. Finally, in ethnographic records of Sami and Finnic people, bear hunting occurs primarily during the winter. Hunters follow tracks in the snow to bears resting in their dens. Uller's association with the snowshoe fits this model of association with bear hunting traditions. There are many unreconciled questions about Uller. If Uller is associated with ancestral Siberian hunting traditions, the associations that can be made by inference through the story of Voland are fragmentary. Uller's history would be told in the context of dynamic cultural evolutionary processes characterized by migrations and formative periods in Scandinavia and Western Siberia. Tracking the ancestral bear in myths through time and space, we follow the tracks of those who hunted the bear so long ago.